And this is Last Chance Surgery. Tonight, Jared crammed so much into his life. Most people haven't even, even done half of what Jared's done. Until fate stepped in. And now he needs an operation to save his life that could also kill him. He is an amazing young man. And the day amputee Shirley's been waiting for. Hi oh, Shirley, how are you going? How are you going? I've got a toy for you. In an Australian first, she will try to walk normally with her new computerised leg implanted into her body. Stop squashing your toes, I hope. <laughs> Jared is a young man who has never wasted a moment. Most people haven't even done half of what Jared's done um, in their whole lifetime. And Jared's done it all by 17. I mean, he's that highly motivated. He had a long list of talents. Dancer, actor, musician. Until one day, six years ago... And then he said, Mum, I can't feel my left arm. So... <laughs> That was the beginning of it all. Jared had suffered a bleed in the brain and he was diagnosed with an arteriovenous malformation or an AVM. An AVM is an abnormal cluster of blood vessels, arteries and veins tangled together like a ball of string with no capillaries to slow the flow of blood. And just like uh, too much water running down a river can burst the banks of the river or too many cars running down the road can cause potholes. The same thing happens with an AVM with time. Sooner or later you get wear and tear changes, the walls break and then there's a bleed into the brain. Because Jared is only in his 20s, AVMs can return. Jared has had surgery twice to remove deadly malformations and the strokes he has suffered have slowed him down but they've certainly not stopped him. He is an amazing young man. One of the great things about Jared is despite challenges that he's had since the time of the stroke at the age of 17, he, he has looked to make the best of his, his life, not looking to, to see what he's lost. Hey, uh, Jared, what was the best bit, mate? <laughs> <laughs> The best bit was landing on the grass. Yeah. Uh, the tragic thing often in, in, in this particular area, if, if a bad stroke occurs, is that the brain, in terms of its thinking part, is often unaffected and, and the patient can be very, very aware. And now the AVM is back for a third time and there is a high chance Jared could have another bleed in the brain and possibly die. So if you're looking at a, a lifespan of a young man, it means that you know there's certainly well in excess of 90% that it will bleed again. And each time it does bleed, there's uh, the risk of further damage. Jared needs his familiar hero, the surgeon who has saved his life twice before, Professor Michael Morgan. So, Jared, hi. Long time no see. No, it's, it's been a real, real long time. Jared's new AVM is in a particularly nasty area. This is brainstem, essential for staying alive. And this is the malformation Professor Morgan must try to remove. It takes up almost half of the vital structure. The bleed in 2004, I suffered, um, Paralysis. Yeah, I'm not sure if that was from the surgery or the, or the um, bleed, but is there a chance of that happening yeah. again? There is a chance for problems after surgery, and I, you know, this is you know tiger country. It's like the midbrain or the brainstem is the uh, really the the relay station for everything going from the brain to the body and everything from the body to the brain. So it's very, very important and it's got a very small cross-sectional area. It really, uh, you know, the total cross-sectional area is no bigger than that. So when the AVM takes up a good part of that, uh, it means that a little bit of 
error can cause significant damage or even death. So if Professor Michael Morgan can remove this new AVM, Jared has a great chance of surviving. But what he is proposing is technically very difficult. Professor Morgan must first carefully separate the AVM from the brain tissue around it. Then he will remove the tangled mess, making sure the brainstem is kept safe. The risks are high, but Jared and his family are ready for the fight. Life's been tough on Shirley in the past four years. To put clothes away, you can't because they're up higher and, you know, it's just simple things you think, oh, you know, anybody can do it, but you can't. She had her right leg amputated above the knee and the only way she could get around was on crutches or in a wheelchair. That was until Professor Ian Woodgate offered her a revolutionary new procedure, two-part surgery, the first of its kind in Australia. He put a metal rod into Shirley's femur. Over time, it became part of Shirley's own bone. Then he exposed the end of the rod through the skin, ready for the computerized leg to be attached. It's been five days since the final surgery, and this is the moment Shirley has been waiting for. Hi Shirley, how are you going? How are you going? I've got a toy for you, <laughs> and a visitor. Shirley's like you, Andreas, who's come from Germany. How do you do? He's nice one of our, uh, our orthotic gurus, and he's going to help fit the new sea leg for us, which is our new whiz-bang prosthetic that goes on here. It's the Rolls-Royce of artificial legs, and takes a fair amount of assembling. So this is the sea leg adapter, which has got the modular bit to it adapted. So this is what she's going to end up with, the first part of the extension, that's going to ultimately allow the bending and straightening through this joint just in here. And this can be adjusted. It's got some computer terminal adapters just on the end here, and they can be adjusted ultimately, as can the little force transmission through here. It's also got a special foot adapter, which has almost got like a ground reaction in it, so it'll help give you a touch of spring. I'm really overwhelmed. I really am. I, I don't know what to say. This is where you told me to bring the other shoe. Yeah. <laughs> nice tight fit. It's not squashing your toes, I hope. <laughs> A quick twist, and after four long years, Shirley has a leg that's part of her body. So again, we can adjust the vertical height here. But the difficult test for Shirley is still ahead, putting weight on that leg, seeing if she can even walk with her new limb. It's been a long wait for Shirley. She had her leg amputated four years ago and had given up on ever walking normally, until now. She has just had a computerised leg fitted. It's been embedded into her own femur. And for the first time, Shirley is going to try to stand and walk. So we want you to put some weight through it, Shirley. And um, yeah, Andreas is going to watch your gait pattern to see how we're going. So it will feel very strange. <sighs> Big breath. That's the way. Touch internally rotated. You just took a few steps. I, I did, didn't I? The beaming look on her face, uh, it's uh, incredible for, for me to see. I tell you what, it feels good. It really does. It, it's, it's heaps better than the one I had, mate. A few minor adjustments, and there is no stopping Shirley. Ah, oh, get out! I'm walking. What is she? Isn't that fantastic? It is. It's terrific. I was always ashamed of her. But I'm not now. No way in the world I'm ashamed of it. I'm over the moon. I really am. I'm... It's terrific. This is what, uh, what I've gone into surgery for, to try and help people with this. And uh, to see someone who's gone from a wheelchair to walking on crutches in uh, a couple of minutes, uh, is very fulfilling having had Shirley go through such a traumatic period over the last few years. It's just incredible. Um, I wasn't expecting it, but... You know you had a walk today, did you like that? You're welcome. Thank you very much. The morning after she received her new leg, and Shirley's family arrives to see the new technology. It look. How do you get him to do that? It's computerised, though. And... 
Oh dear. So when you stand, you're actually leaning. Oh, here, I'll little. show you. Are you happy? Hmm? You can do a demo? Yeah. Come on. Can't stop her. So how does it feel? Oh, it feels really great. It really does. No pain or nothing. No, no. Stop. Looks weird to have you see two feet. <laughs> it is, mate. It really is. It's. And soon we will see Shirley walk without crutches or a frame, completely unassisted. It's the morning of Jared's brain operation. He has a cluster of abnormal blood vessels that has caused strokes and it needs to be removed before Jared has another bleed in his brain. The stakes are so high. It cannot be done in this area without a, a risk of, of less than 20%. And Jared's family is understandably nervous. Yeah, oh, I'll show you the See you, bro. Professor Michael Morgan, the surgeon who has saved Jared's life before, tries to be positive about what's going to occur. It's important not to entertain defeat. Really got to focus and know you can do the case and know that you can win. It has been nearly five months since Shirley had a new computerised leg attached and her life has been completely changed. I got my independence back. That is the main thing. Like I lost it, and uh, for seven years, and to have it back now has just made made it 100% better. Um, to stand in the shower, just doing those little things that you don't think you you know could do ever again, and it just makes a difference. So yeah. I feel on top of the world. Shirley's next goal is a family holiday in a caravan, a simple wish that will be made possible thanks to last chance surgery. Jared is about to undergo brain surgery, his only chance of survival. He has a cluster of abnormal blood vessels that at any time could bleed into Jared's brain. But Jared's situation is even more precarious because the malformation is in such a delicate part of the brain. This is his brain stem through which all the circuitry between the brain and the body goes. And the ABM occupies this segment, uh, a good one third of the whole brain stem. So if it doesn't work, he doesn't survive. First, Professor Michael Morgan has to get into the brain and clip the vessels that are feeding the malformation. We're just taking some of the feeding arteries. And gradually getting around the plane. It's the basilar artery. It's the main artery of supply to the back part of the brain stem. Hugely important personal of the damage. The AVM is taking up almost half of the brain stem. And if the brain stem is damaged during surgery, Jared could die. Professor Morgan also has to make sure the AVM doesn't bleed while he's getting ready to remove it. Finally, he is ready to gently remove the cluster of vessels that has been threatening Jared's life. Do you want to just measure that? It's hard to believe that something so tiny has the power to take a life. But one bleed from one of the malformed vessels and Jared could have been dead within minutes. With the AVM gone, it's time to tell Jared's parents. He's alive and uh, uh, whether there's any um, damage, it's a little early to say, but I, you know, I was really happy with the way it went and there was no surprises.
The news is the best they could hope for at this stage, but it will be a few days before they know if he's come through the life-saving procedure unscathed. It's been 11 days since Jared's brain surgery, and there are some good signs of recovery. Jared, how are you? How are you feeling? You talking today? You know? I'm lazy. He, he still has some new problems that he needs to recover from and that uh, right at the moment his eyelids are uh, uh, nearly fully closed. That often takes about three months. I expect Jared to recover from that point of view. Just show me your thumb, Jared. Just look through, that's good. He's making normal movements on, on the side that was normal before. He's starting to, uh, to say appropriate uh, words and respond appropriately. And two weeks later, almost a month after the operation, Jared is continuing to get better every day. Jared uh, said a few words to me and he said them very clearly, very audibly and, uh, and, and quite loudly and uh, I was just thrilled. So you're well on the way to recovery now. And today's going to be the worst day of the rest of your life. You can only be better than this, OK? Mm, what wonderful words. So each day, just think of that, eh? All right? But you're going to do great. Yeah. When I see you in the rooms in about six weeks' time, I expect you... You'll probably still be in a wheelchair, but I expect you to be able to tell me that you can walk a little bit from, from the wheelchair to the, to the chair in the office. And the time that I see you after that, I expect you to be walking by yourself, OK? It's not coming back this time. Now you hear that, Jared? It's not coming back again. I believe he's going to have a wonderful future, a fantastic future and career and uh, loves in his life. And um, as I've said to Jared many times, um, you know, your children will be dragging you along to show and tell at school to show off all those scars you've got. Sounds a bit trite, but there are the, the treasures. There are the treasures in the darkness, and, and we've found quite a few of those. What patients like Jared go through is tough, but it is also inspiring. Kimberly would have died without a lung transplant. Now living, breathing, is easy. The operation has been a massive change. There's been some a thousand positives and about and a few negatives and it is hard work too though. It's not all easy. It's not um, but it is it is golden. It is absolutely it's saved my life and it's, it's wonderful. Jesse is continuing his fight. He had a tumour in his spine and was saved from becoming paraplegic. And while he's still having treatment for cancer, he has just celebrated his 21st birthday. I actually never thought I'd reach 21, but I'm at 21 now and I'm very thankful for it. But I don't think I would be here if it wasn't for my dad's driving. I think if it wasn't for him, I'd be dead and not wouldn't be celebrating my 21st birthday. Kate has been through a lot. Cancer as a child, the drugs that saved her life then destroyed her heart. Her last chance was a new heart, and it continues to beat strongly. I am very thankful. Words don't really, sorry. Words, I can't, sorry. Words don't really explain in how much you are grateful for the, um, the organ. I will cherish that the rest of my time.